If God knows everything, how did Moses change God's mind? The story of Moses persuading God to change his mind raises profound questions about God's omniscience and human influence. The critical event happens in Exodus chapter 32. The Israelites, having recently escaped Egypt, committed a grave sin by worshiping a golden calf. God, aware of this, tells Moses, I have seen these people. They are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Exodus chapter 32 verses 9 through 10. These verses shows God's anger and disappointment. The term stiff neck is a metaphor for being stubborn and rebellious. Despite witnessing miracles and receiving direct support from God, the Israelites quickly turned to idolatry. This was a critical moment in the story of the Israelites during their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. This passage reveals a lot about the relationship between God, Moses, and the people of Israel. God's anger here is not like human anger. It's a reflection of his just nature against sin and disobedience. The idolatry of the Israelites was a direct violation of the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. This act of turning away from God, even after he had shown his faithfulness and power many times, was a really serious mistake. Before these verses, the Israelites, who had been led out of Egypt by God through Moses, found themselves waiting at the base of Mount Sinai. Moses had gone up the mountain to receive God's commandments and was delayed. The people, feeling abandoned, pressured Aaron to make a golden calf, an idol to worship. The Bible says, They said to Aaron, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Exodus chapter 32 verse 1 this scenario can be viewed as a test of faith for the Israelites. They were in a situation where their trust in God and Moses was challenged. Their failure to remain faithful demonstrates the fragility of their trust and reliance on God. God's statement to Moses was, Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them, and that I may destroy them. God's statement can be perplexing. Some interpret this as God inviting Moses to pray. Moses stands in the gap, not merely as a leader, but as a mediator between God and his people. His response to this situation is crucial. This passage highlights the balance between God's justice and mercy. While he is just and cannot tolerate sin, his choice to talk with Moses in the next parts of the story shows his kindness. God's anger isn't random or unfair. It's always matched by his love and his wish for people to repent and make things right again. The incident serves as a warning and a lesson. It reminds us of the importance of faithfulness and trust in God, especially during times of uncertainty or when we feel abandoned. It's a call to avoid idolatry which, in a modern sense, can be anything we prioritize above God. This story illustrates that our actions have consequences and that while God is in control, He allows humans to exercise free will. The golden calf is not just about judgment, but also about redemption. It sets the stage for Moses' intercession and God's forgiveness showcasing God's willingness to forgive and restore those who repent. The Israelites, feeling abandoned by Moses and unsure about God's presence, create and worship a golden calf, an act that deeply angers God and has significant consequences for them. Moses responds, not by denying their wrongdoing, but by pleading for mercy based on God's promises and reputation. Why should your anger burn against your people 
whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. Exodus chapter 32, verse 11. Remarkably, the Bible says, Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Exodus chapter 32, verse 14. God's omniscience. God's omniscience is his ability to know everything, past, present, and future. This raises the question, if God knows everything, why did he seem to change his mind? Moses' interaction with God highlights the power of prayer. Prayer is not about changing God's mind. It's about aligning ourselves with God's will. Through prayer, we express our desires, concerns, and hopes, engaging in a relationship with God. When the Bible speaks of God changing his mind, it's often a way of describing God's interactions with humanity in terms we can understand. It doesn't necessarily mean God literally changes his plans. It's more about how God's consistent nature interacts with human actions. God is just and merciful, and his actions in the Bible reflect these attributes. Moses asking God for help shows that what people do can play a part in God's overall plan. It shows that God values our input and our relationship with him. God's interaction with Moses suggests a dynamic relationship where our actions and prayers have a place in God's plan. This story also talks about how God's control and power are balanced with human free will. Divine sovereignty refers to God's supreme power and authority over everything. This means he has control over the universe, history, and all aspects of existence. The Bible says, Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases Him. Psalm chapter 115, verse 3. This verse shows God's ultimate authority. Human free will is the ability to make choices independently of any external influence. The Bible presents humans as beings with free will, capable of making their own decisions. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. This invitation by Joshua to the Israelites implies a choice. The Bible is full of examples where God's sovereignty is evident. For instance, in the story of Joseph, despite being sold into slavery, Joseph rises to power in Egypt. Later, he tells his brothers, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. This shows God working through human actions. While God is sovereign, the Bible also shows that human choices have real consequences. Adam and Eve's decision to eat the forbidden fruit, Genesis chapter 3, led to the fall of man, indicating that human actions can have significant, even world-altering consequences. The Bible suggests that God has a master plan, but also allows humans to make their own choices within this plan. Prayer is an action that demonstrates the balance between God's sovereignty and human will. When we pray, we are actively making a choice to seek God's intervention or guidance, acknowledging both His control and our own ability to request and seek change. Faith itself is a choice influenced by God's sovereignty. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. This suggests that while faith is a human act, it is also enabled by God's grace. Grace is an unearned favor from God. It's the idea that God gives us blessings and salvation, not because we deserve them, but as a free gift because of his love for us. 
grace emphasizes that salvation is a gift from God, not a result of our own works or merits. Remarkably, the Bible says, Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. This is seen as God changing his mind, but it's more about God responding to Moses' prayer in a way that aligns with his character of mercy and compassion. The connection between these two passages lies in the nature of God's grace and mercy. In Ephesians, grace is shown as the foundation of salvation, a kind and generous act from God. In Exodus, we see God's grace in action when he decides to spare the Israelites despite their sin. Both instances demonstrate God's willingness to offer love and forgiveness, even when it's not deserved. Moses' intercession in Exodus is an act of faith. He believes in God's mercy and pleads on behalf of the Israelites. Similarly, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 talks about faith being the means through which we receive grace. Both passages show that faith plays a crucial role in experiencing God's grace. In both passages, God's character remains consistent. He is just but his justice is tempered with mercy. His decision to not destroy the Israelites and his offering of salvation through grace are both rooted in his loving and forgiving nature. From Ephesians, we learn about the gift of salvation that comes through faith. From Exodus, we learn about the importance of repentance and intercession. Both teach us that while we are imperfect and often fail, God's grace is always available to us. Reconciling God's sovereignty with human free will is complex. Many suggest that God's omniscience includes knowing all possible outcomes of every choice we make, and His sovereignty is exercised in the way He responds to these choices, guiding the overall direction toward His ultimate plan. In daily life, this balance encourages responsibility for our choices while trusting God's overall plan. It teaches humility in decision-making and reliance on God for guidance and wisdom. While God's plan is ultimate, He allows human actions to influence the course of events. This concept is echoed in other parts of the Bible, such as when Abraham intercedes for Sodom. Genesis chapter 18 verses 22 through 33. Understanding the mind of God. The concept of the mind of God is unique, especially when considering whether human history can change God's mind. The story of Exodus chapter 32, where Moses seems to influence God's decision, provides a fascinating case study for this discussion. To understand the mind of God, we must acknowledge that God's thoughts, plans, and understanding are infinitely greater than ours. The Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 through 9. This indicates that God's understanding and reasoning are beyond human comprehension. God is described as omniscient, all-knowing, and omnipotent, all-powerful. This means He knows everything that will happen and has the power to do anything. His decisions are based on an infinite understanding of the past, present, and future. The incident in Exodus chapter 32 raises the question, can human actions change God's mind? This is not about changing God's mind in a human sense, but rather about God responding to human actions within His sovereign plan. Moses' prayer for the Israelites is a key element in this story. His prayer could be seen as aligning with God's will rather than changing it. Prayer in the Bible is often about aligning our will with God and participating in His plan. Despite appearances, God's character remains consistent. 
He is just and righteous, yet merciful and compassionate. His response to Moses' prayer reflects these attributes. God's willingness to forgive the Israelites demonstrates his mercy consistent with his nature. The difference between God's ways and our ways, as stated in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 through 9, is crucial to understanding this balance. God's ways being higher and more complex than ours means his responses and plans are based on an understanding far beyond our own. The story in Exodus chapter 32 illustrates this difference. While we see a change of mind in God's higher ways, it is a consistent part of his relational and responsive nature. The story teaches us about the nature of God. He is not a distant, unchanging force, but a personal relational being who responds to his people. It shows the importance of repentance, prayer, and faithfulness. The Power of Prayer Understanding how prayer and repentance influence God's actions, especially in the context of his hate for sin, requires an exploration of biblical concepts. Prayer is a fundamental aspect of our faith, serving as a communication channel between us and God. It's not just asking for things, but involves praise, thanksgiving, confession, and intercession. The Bible says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. This indicates that prayer is a way to bring our concerns and desires before God. While God is omniscient and sovereign, the Bible portrays prayer as having a real impact. The story of Moses in Exodus chapter 32 is a prime example. It shows that God, in His sovereignty, has chosen to allow our prayers to play a role in His plan. When people repent, it doesn't change God's character, but aligns us with His will. God's response to repentance is often shown as forgiveness and mercy. In the story of Jonah and Nineveh, when the people of Nineveh repented, the Bible records, God saw their actions, that they had turned from their evil ways. So God relented from the disaster He had threatened to bring upon them, and He did not do it. Jonah chapter 3, verse 10. This shows God responding to human repentance with compassion. God's hatred for sin is consistent throughout the Bible. Sin is anything that goes against God's will and laws. It separates us from God and brings about spiritual death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. God's hate for sin is rooted in His holiness and righteousness. When the Bible talks about God repenting, it doesn't imply a change in His nature or an admission of wrongdoing. Instead, it's a human way of describing God's response to human actions. It's about God moving in a different direction in response to human repentance or prayer consistent with His unchanging nature of love and justice. Prayer and repentance are acts of humility and submission to God's will. They are acknowledgments of our dependence on God. When we pray or repent, we open the door for God to work in our lives, in line with His will and character. These actions don't force or trick God. Instead, they help us match up with what He wants. Faith is crucial in both prayer and repentance. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith in God's character, His goodness, mercy, and power highlights effective prayer and genuine repentance. The story of Moses interceding for God's people is a difficult passage to interpret, and there have been various understandings of it. Bible-believing Christians have traditionally interpreted this passage in the following ways. First option, 
God's change of mind should be understood literally. Those who hold the open view of God believe that the passage should be taken at face value. In other words, it suggests that God actually changed his mind when Moses prayed or interceded for the people. While he was determined to destroy the people, the prayer of Moses actually changed his behavior. According to these individuals, this verse has a number of important implications. First, it shows that God's plans are not unchangeable or predetermined. In fact, he is capable of altering his plans when believers offer up prayers. This should be a great source of encouragement for all of us to prioritize prayer. Prayer truly does change things. The second option, human actions are attributed to God. He did not really change his mind. Some people believe that God changing his mind is the best way to interpret this passage. But the traditional view of an unchanging God who does not alter his plan is very prominent. This is because the people were eventually judged by the Lord. However, none of the people from that generation of Israel were allowed to enter the Promised Land, except for Joshua and Caleb. They would indeed be judged by God, meaning that the judgment was merely postponed. God didn't change his mind. Instead, he postponed the judgment to a later time when a new generation could replace the sinful one. Later, this new generation was also judged for their sins of unbelief and others. Lessons from Moses' story. Intercession matters. Moses' story encourages us to pray for others and intercede on their behalf, as our prayers can have a unique impact. Moses' actions in Exodus chapter 32 provide a powerful lesson on the role of intercession in a faith context. Through his actions, we learn several key aspects about standing in the gap for others before God. Moses steps in to plead for the Israelites. He doesn't ignore their sin, but instead advocates for mercy on their behalf. He says to God, why should your anger burn against your people? whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. Exodus chapter 32, verse 11. This shows that intercession involves support for others, even when they are in the wrong. Moses reminds God of his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Jacob saying, Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Exodus chapter 32, verse 13. This teaches us that intercession can involve reminding God of his words and promises, not because God forgets, but as a way of aligning ourselves with his will. Moses' intercession shows great humility and compassion. He could have let the Israelites face the consequences of their own actions, but chose to plead for mercy on their behalf. This act of selflessness and compassion is at the heart of intercessory prayer. The remarkable outcome of Moses' intercession is that God relents. This teaches us that while God is sovereign and His will is perfect, He allows our prayers to influence His actions showing his responsive and relational nature. Moses was able to intercede effectively because of his close relationship with God. His dialogue with God throughout the Exodus narrative shows a deep personal relationship. This teaches us that effective intercession is rooted in a strong personal relationship with God. The Character of God the story of Exodus chapter 32 highlights God's mercy and readiness to forgive. Despite his knowledge of all things, God engages with us in a relational and responsive way. Moses' role as an intercessor teaches us about God's responsiveness to human intercession. Moses stands between God and the Israelites, pleading for mercy on their behalf. His successful appeal 
shows that God values and responds to intercession, which is a vital part of the relationship between God and humanity. The entire episode illustrates God's desire for a relationship with his people. His anger is not just about broken laws, it's about a broken relationship. God's willingness to dialogue with Moses, consider his plea and ultimately relent, shows that he is not a distant, unyielding deity, but a relational God who cares deeply about his people. The incident emphasizes God's sovereignty. Despite the situation seeming to suggest a change in God's plan, it actually demonstrates that God, in his sovereignty, chooses to incorporate human actions, like Moses' intercession, into his divine plan. It's a mix of God being in total control and people making their own choices, where God still rules over everything, but also pays attention to what people do. Our relationship with God. This is the personal nature of our relationship with God. We are not merely subjects to a distant ruler, but participants in a dynamic relationship with a loving God. What does Moses teach us about our relationship with God? Moses' interaction with God shows a boldness in approaching God. He isn't afraid to speak his mind to God, which indicates a deep personal relationship. We learn that we can approach God openly and honestly in prayer. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Despite his boldness, Moses also demonstrates humility and respect. He acknowledges God's right to be angry and doesn't demand or challenge God's authority. His approach teaches us to balance boldness with humility in our relationship with God. Moses knew God's character, merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love. Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. His plea to God was based on this understanding. For Moses, we learn the importance of knowing God's character, which guides how to relate to him and expect him to respond. Moses' actions also reflect faithfulness and obedience. He does not tolerate the sin of the Israelites, but seeks mercy for them. From this, we learn that being faithful to God includes recognizing sin, but also understanding his mercy. Moses' relationship with God was personal and direct. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. This demonstrates that our relationship with God can be personal and intimate. Understanding the Bible's language. We need to interpret the language of the Bible in its context. When it says God changed his mind, it often means that God is responding to human actions within the framework of his unchanging nature and plan. When God informs Moses about the Israelites worshiping the golden calf and expresses his anger saying, now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Exodus chapter 32 verse 10, showing the importance of understanding the context of God's words Moses knew that God's statement was not just about anger, but also about testing Moses' leadership and commitment to the Israelites. When the Bible says that God relented after Moses' plea, Exodus chapter 32, verse 14, it teaches us about the anthropomorphic language of the Bible, using human terms to describe God. This doesn't mean that God changes his mind like humans do, but rather, it's a way of explaining how God interacts with human actions and prayers within his unchanging nature and sovereign plan. Moses stands as an intercessor between God and the people. His actions teach us that the language of the Bible often invites us to participate in God's plans through prayer and intercession. Moses' dialogue with God shows that prayer is a powerful tool for us to engage with God. Moses' ability to understand and respond appropriately to God's words shows the importance of discernment in interpreting the Bible. 
It highlights the need to seek God's wisdom and guidance in understanding His Word, rather than relying solely on a literal interpretation. Conclusion In conclusion, the story of Moses and the Golden Calf offers deep insights into the nature of God and our relationship with Him. While God's omniscience means He knows all outcomes, He still values and responds to our prayers and actions. This story illustrates the complexity of God's interaction with humanity and invites us to engage actively and trustingly in our relationship with Him. Through Moses' example, we learn the importance of intercession, the unchanging character of God, and the dynamic nature of our relationship with the divine. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather before you today hearts open and spirits yearning for your wisdom and guidance. In the vastness of your creation, we are humbled by your majesty, yet emboldened by the love you show us each day. As we seek an understanding of your ways, we reflect upon the story of Moses, a testament to your boundless mercy and the power of prayer. Lord, in your infinite wisdom, you know all things, the past, present, and future. Yet in the story of Moses, we see a man who through his deep faith and earnest prayer seemed to change your mind. This narrative, Lord, stirs in our questions about the nature of prayer and our relationship with you. Help us to understand how our prayers interact with your divine plan. We acknowledge, O oh God, that our understanding is limited and your ways are higher than our ways. As we contemplate the mystery of your omniscience, teach us to trust in your perfect will. In Moses' story, we are reminded of the depth of your compassion and your willingness to engage with us in our human experience. Lord, guide us to approach you as Moses did, with courage and humility. Let our prayers not just be a list of requests, but a dialogue with you, where we share our deepest fears, highest hopes, and sincere gratitude. Help us to listen for your voice in the stillness of our hearts, trusting that you are always speaking to us, guiding us toward your truth and light. In our moments of doubt and confusion, remind us of your unchanging nature. You are a God of love and justice, a God who listens and responds. Teach us, O oh Lord, to pray with faith, not in our ability to change your mind, but in your unfailing love and wisdom to bring about the best in our lives and in the world. As we reflect on the power of prayer, instill in us a spirit of perseverance, just as Moses stood in the gap for his people, empower us to intercede for others, for our families, our communities, and our world. May our prayers be a bridge, connecting the needs of the earth with the compassion of heaven. In moments when we feel our prayers are unanswered, grant us the grace to trust in your timing and your greater plan. Help us to remember that your ways are not always our ways, and your thoughts are not our thoughts. In these times, Strengthen our faith and deepen our reliance on you. Dear God, we also pray for the wisdom to discern when to speak and when to listen, when to act and when to wait. Like Moses, may we be aligned to your guidance, ready to follow your lead and bold in our faith. In our journey with you, let us be inspired by the example of Moses, who dared to converse with the Almighty. May his story remind us that we too are called to a relationship with you, a relationship marked by honest communication, deep trust, and unwavering faith. Finally, as we walk through the complexities of life, let us always be mindful of your presence. In every joy and every trial, may we sense your guiding hand and loving embrace. Teach us to see your handiwork in the world around us, 
and to feel your peace in the quiet moments of our days. In all things, we give thanks to you, God of all creation, for your enduring love and the gift of prayer. Through our conversations with you, may we grow in faith, love, and understanding, walking ever closer to you each day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.